Today we're going to be looking at adding fractions which have different denominators. We're first going to get the logic of it and then we're going to um, look at how to do it quickly and easily. Right, so let's start. If I have um, a whole chocolate bar here, one whole chocolate bar, and I cut it up into six pieces, you know we call each of those pieces one sixth. And if I cut it up into three pieces, you call each of those pieces one third. Now, it's very easy if I tell you I'm going to give you one sixth of my chocolate bar and then a little bit later I say, okay, and you can have another two sixths of my chocolate bar. If you need to add up the one sixth plus the two sixths, it's very obvious to see that you've got one, two, three, three sixths of my chocolate bar. Easy to add if you're dealing with the same size pieces. However, if I tell you, look, you can have one sixth of my chocolate bar, and a little bit later I say to you, oh, hang on, here you go, have a third of my chocolate bar as well. Then when I ask you, well, well how much have you got? You've got one sixth of my chocolate bar, as well as one third of my chocolate bar. How much is that all together? Well, actually, it's not so easy to add that because you've got two totally different size pieces. And if what you do is the following, you notice that that one third piece that you have is exactly the same size as two sixes, then it becomes easy because then one third plus one sixth is exactly the same as two sixths plus one sixths, and so it becomes three sixths. And that's what we're going to do when we add fractions which have different denominators. They're different size pieces, so the first thing we need to do is to try and make them somehow into the same size piece. And we do that by finding common denominators. We'll have a look at that now. So, Let's just go through that again, one third plus one sixth with pictures. So if we take one third plus one sixth, drawing one third, it'll look like this, where you've got your three pieces, cut into three pieces, taken one, and your one sixth will look like this, where you've cut into six pieces and you've taken one. When we add them, what we're saying is, if I give you that one third and that one sixth, how much have you got all together? The pieces are different sizes, so you can't make a sensible answer. You need to have the pieces being the same size to have a sensible answer. So what do you do? You take that thing that was one third, and if you just cut it all up a little bit more, you can make it into one sixth sizes, and you will see that one third is exactly the same as two sixths. And so then what you can say is one third plus one sixth is the same as two sixths plus one sixth, which is three sixths. And just so you remember your simplification of fractions, we can divide top and the bottom of the fraction by three and we will get that three sixths is just exactly the same as one half. Okay, I want you to do this for yourself now. Pause the video and do one quarter plus three eighths. There are diagrams in your homework book, so pause the video, open your homework book and do it there. Okay, you should have got a picture like this. You would have started with a quarter, dividing it up into four pieces, colouring in one. Um, the eighths should have looked like this right from the start. You've got eight, you take three. You want to make the pieces the same, so you cut up this into eight pieces as well. And so you can see one quarter is the same as two eighths. And so what you've got is two eighths plus three eighths, and you get your answer of five eighths. I hope you got that right. Obviously, we want to be able to do this quickly without having to do extensive drawings every time. So let's just get the logic straight. What we were doing is we were making sure that we have the same size pieces, which means that we need to have denominators that are exactly the same. So how do we do that? Well, the way to do that is you take each of your denominators, 4 and 8. And what you need to find is the lowest common multiple of 4 and 8. And that will be the denominator you can use in common for both of them. So 
Let's write out the multiples of 4. Those are 4, 8, 12, 16, etc., etc. The multiples of 8, 8, 16, 24, etc. What we're looking for is the lowest common multiple. So I look to see which is the lowest number that is common. In other words, that's in both of those lists. Well, the smallest number that's in both of those lists is 8. So this is going to be the denominator I'm going to use. So I say a quarter plus three eighths. Different size pieces, so I can't add it yet. I need to make the pieces the same size, and I have discovered that if I use eighths as the size of my pieces, it'll be fine. This one here is easy, because it's already eighths, so I don't have to do anything with it. This one, I just need to make an equivalent fraction, and we know the golden rule for doing that, what I multiply or divide the bottom by, I must do to the top. So from 4 to 8, I multiplied by 2. So I must multiply the 1 also by 2, and I get 2 eighths. 2 eighths plus 3 eighths gives me 5 eighths, and I am done. Quick and easy. The same thing works for subtraction as well. So I've got 3 quarters minus 1 sixth. I'm talking about different size pieces, so I can't do the subtraction until I've found a common denominator. To do that, I need to write out the multiples of 4 and 6 and find the lowest common multiple. So the multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Hopefully that's enough, but sometimes actually you have to write out quite a long list before you get to the lowest common multiple, but we'll see when we start with the sixes. Okay, the multiples of six are six, 12, 18. Oh, and I'm lucky this time because I can immediately see that I've got 12 that's in both of those lists. So 12 will be my lowest common denominator. So what do I do? I take three quarters minus one sixth, and I'm going to write those both as fractions, make equivalent fractions, but with twelfths in the denominator. How do I make equivalent fractions? Well, the golden rule is what I do to the bottom, four multiplied by three. I must do exactly the same to the top, so this becomes three times three, which is nine. And here, 6 times 2 gave me 12, so I must multiply 1 by 2, and I get 2. Now I've got 9 twelfths minus 1 twelfth. I'm in, I mean, minus 2 twelfths. I'm in the position where I'm dealing only with twelfths. I've got 9 of them. I subtract off 2 of them. Obviously, I'm going to be left with 7 of those twelfths, and I'm finished. The only last thing I need to show you is how to do all of this with mixed numbers. And if my rule for mixed numbers is the easiest way to do them and never make a mistake is to make sure that you just turn them into improper fractions first and then you're in the same situation you've always been in. So the easy way to do this is just to turn these into improper fractions. Let's remind ourselves. To turn this into an improper fraction, we must say 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 gives me 17 over 5. And then here I say 1 times, I say 1 times 3, why won't you let me point? 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4, so I get 4 over 3, and I'm subtracting them. So now I'm back in the position I've been in. I've got fifths and I've got thirds, and I'm trying to make the subtraction. Okay, how am I going to do that? Well, I need to find a common denominator. So I go and I write out my multiples of 5, and those are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, etc. My multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Ah, great, I can see I finally got to something that's in common in both those lists. So 15 will be my common denominator. All right, so here I go. I've got 17 over 5 minus 4 over 3, and I want to make sure they've got the same denominator so I can do the subtraction. Now, how do I do this? I've got to get equivalent fractions. I multiplied here by 3, so I have to multiply 17 by 3. Okay, that's a bit of a pain, but we can do it. 
17 multiplied by 3. 3 sevens are 21. 1 carry 2. 3 ones are 3 plus 2 is 5. So we get 51. Then if we do this other one here, we had to multiply here by 5 to get to 15. So we must multiply 4 by 5. Thankfully, that's an easier multiplication. 4 fives give me 20. 51 minus 20 gives me 31. I've got 31 over 15. 31 over 15. We can simplify that. I mean, put, turn it back into a mixed number. 15 into 31 goes twice, remainder 1. So it's 2 and 1 15th. Okay, just to check that you do know what's going on, please open your homework books and do the example 3 and 5 sixths minus 1 and 2 fifteenths. Pause the video, try it for yourself, and then we'll check it together. Okay, you should have done this. 3 sixths are 18 plus 5, 23 over 6 minus 1 times 15 is 15, plus 2 is 17 over 15. All right, now we have to find our common denominator. So we've got to write down our multiples of 6. Those are 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. Multiples of 15, 15, 30. Oh, great, I've already found my common denominator is 30. Okay. So 23 over 6 is going to be, I need to write that over 30, and I also need to write 17 over 15 over 30. From here to here, I multiplied by 5, so I need to multiply 23 by 5, and I'm going to just quickly do a calculation. 5 threes of 15, carry 1. Oh, that was a terrible one. Let me do it again. 5 twos are 10, plus 1 makes 11, so you've got 115. And to get from 15 to 30, we multiplied by 2, so we must multiply 17 by 2, and we get 34. All right, now we're having to do a calculation. 115 minus 34, that's going to give us 81. We get 81 over 30, and we can actually divide both of these by 3. So we get here, when we divide by 3, we get 27 and that is 27 over 10. And if you wanted to, 27 over 10, you could turn it back into a mixed number. And that would be 2 and 7 tenths. I hope you got that.